If you're watching this video, then you're probably interested in replacing the stock filament wiper on your bamboo machine. For the most part, the stock wiper works okay. But if you print with pet G a lot like me, or you're finding the stock wiper just isn't cutting the mustard, then you may need something a bit more thorough. Introducing the Scrubbler. Now, before we get into this, Need It Make It made an awesome video testing various other design options. So let's quickly go through some of them so you can see how the Scrubbler performs against other nozzle cleaning systems. One of these systems is the Ultimate Nozzle Wiper, which involves using a small piece of silicone tubing to clean the nozzle. But this version seems to spray filament all over the printer, including your print, which is a deal breaker for me. Then there is the over-engineered nozzle wiper slash poop sweeper, but it seemed to have issues hitting the nozzle and the assembly seemed a bit finicky and it didn't really seem to clean the nozzle very well. And finally, you have the wiper version 3.3, which uses the same wafer design that's used on the bamboo A series printers. And this design actually seems to work really well, other than the rubber wafer falling off. However, small pieces of filament eventually get stuck inside and end up causing more harm than good. So after watching this video, I didn't really see any designs that I particularly liked, but then I came across the Scrubbler, a design that I hadn't actually seen before. And what's really cool about this is that it combines the nozzle wiper from the A1 series with the P1 and X1 series. So you should technically have the best of both worlds. After reading all the reviews, it seems as though lots of people have been having success with it. To add icing to the cake, you can install this anti-splash cover that prevents filament in the poop chute from flinging out onto your build plate and getting in the way. So this all looked like it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So now it's time to get to printing. Now there were a number of people that listed this particular design, so it was a bit confusing as to which one I needed to choose. I eventually went with this one. Now there are two versions you can print, so just make sure you choose the right one for your printer. I have the P1S, so I'll be choosing the regular version. Now I'm going to be printing with PETG as it has a higher heat resistance than PLA, but if you're going to be printing ABS or ASA, then you should probably print these parts in the same material. Here are my print settings and model orientation you can use if you like. So once you've got everything printed and removed the supports, it's time to install. The only thing I needed to buy was the A1 rubber scrubber. All the other pieces I needed, I took from the spare parts that came with my printer and should have also come with yours too. The additional screws I found in the scraper bag that comes with the machine and these actually fit perfectly. All the other screws are taken from the printer on assembly and reinstalled with the scrubbler. More on that shortly. So I decided to semi-assemble the device as pre-tapping the screw holes helps to install everything much easier. Plus it also gave me an idea on what it looked like and where everything had to go. Now it came time for me to install the rubber wafer into the device. I counted out four rows of nubs, then cut it with a knife on a cutting mat. Now the adhesive on the back isn't strong enough, so you're gonna have to add some super glue. Only a small drop will do. You can see here that I added a little bit too much as it started overflowing off the sides, but I wiped it off quickly so it didn't stick to the rubber. This super glue is actually pretty awesome. The cap never gets stuck, the nozzle never gets clogged. I highly recommend it. Not sponsored at all, but it's just a great glue that I use all the time. But of course you can use any super glue you want. So here is the whole thing assembled. Now you will need to separate it when you're installing it, but I just put it together so you can see what it looks like. Now it was time to get it installed. The first thing I did was remove the original wiper. Then I removed the chute screw. Now I'm putting the bottom half of the assembly into the chute. I've already placed the screw inside of it, so I can just go ahead and screw it in. And this screw is one of the ones I took from the scraper kit. Now this lip didn't cause me any issues. However, some people have reported that this lip can cause a jam with third party build plates. So just make sure you check there is enough clearance before running the machine. Now I'm installing the mounting bracket and using the same screw that I took from that hole earlier. Now I'm tightening the screws to ensure they don't come loose. And I add in the anti-splash cover. It just slots right in. You don't need any screws to keep it in place, just wiggle it around a bit until it's seated properly. And here is where I ran into some problems. As you can see, the original wiper appears to be too high, as the nozzle really pushes into it. And when I tried it out, filament got stuck between the original wiper and the rubber one, but the anti-splash cover seemed to be working, so at least that was nice. And after using this maybe two or three times, the PTFE tubing on the original wiper started to get damaged. And when I compared it with the original one that I'd used for maybe over a hundred prints, 
that one was still perfectly fine and this one had only gone through about three prints and it was already falling apart. So I thought, ah, I maybe have to fix this. So I had a look around and found a version that had both of the wiper mounts recessed a bit more. So I printed it, installed it, and ran a print. This time it was too low and the nozzle barely even touched it. I thought, oh boy, I'm gonna have to fix this myself, aren't I? But as I was searching for solutions to my problem, I noticed that someone had already gone and done it for me. A maker that goes by BR1ACC. Br maybe brick. Break. I always mispronounce these and then realize later on how to pronounce it. <laughs> anyway, they remixed the model so now the wiper sits further down. After reading the description, this was the exact fix to my problem. So I reprinted everything, third time's the charm, right? Before I installed it, I wanted to show you the difference between the one I had before and the new revised version for my P1S. Now the wiper is mounted underneath the mounting point instead of on top. So after installing this for a third time, I noticed the two wipers were much better aligned. I had a good feeling. And behold, a clean nozzle. And again. Oh my God, it works. So after a few prints, I checked the PTFE tubing. I also checked the rubber and it seemed undamaged. Oh. So here are a few clips of the new nozzle cleaning system in action, and you can determine if it works for yourself. Now I wasn't able to do a proper test where I perform multiple filament swaps as I don't have an AMS yet. Bamboo Labs, if you want to send one to me, I wouldn't say no. But I did run a number of prints and they all turned out really well with a clean nozzle and no filament spray. Now, as I use this a bit more, I'm gonna put an update in the description of the video just to let you know how I'm going. Now, you can run this without modifying the G-code. However, I added in an additional wipe right before the final stage of the nozzle clean, where it wipes along the bed. You can find the G-code for this on the Maker page, as well as install instructions if there was anything that was unclear in this video. In conclusion, I think this is a pretty epic solution and it works. Just make sure that you double check what type of printer you have versus what model you're printing. If you have the P1P or P1S, then I would use the model that I used with the slightly lowered sweeper. But hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.